Hello health seekers, Inga from Health Origins here. So today I'm going to show you how you can turn a simple conquer or horse chestnut that is plentiful right now. It probably starts maybe falling off the trees in UK and throughout Europe about second half of September. So I'm going to show you how to turn this natural uh, bounty into a washing up powder for you you know for washing your clothes so you can either use this as um as a dehydrated powder to put in little kind of either cotton baggies like that or an old sock and you know just um chuck it in the washing machine um or you could also make a soapy liquid because horse chestnuts are rich in saponins natural um, you know, saponins, saponins, a bit like um, soap nuts. You can get some soap nuts as well um, in some, you know, health food stores. Um, so, yeah, so this is the way to make a natural detergent for your clothes. And I dedicate this video to my beloved grandma. If you have noticed, um, my uh, videos have not been appearing for a few weeks now. Um, and it's partly due to the fact that um, um, suddenly um, and unexpectedly my grandmother passed away. Um, so I, I have been in Lithuania and actually these conquerors are from Lithuania where we went for her funeral. Um, and I just decided to bring some, you know, conquerors back uh, and do that. So I wanted to dedicate um, this video to my beloved grandma. Um, because she in kind of from early age she instilled this uh, love of forest love of gathering you know things in the forest because we were always you know um, in the forest gathering either mushrooms or um, uh, wild um, strawberries or uh, hazelnuts or sorrel and you know a myriad of other things so yeah so um, this is for you, my dear grandma. Um, you know, I'll love you always and you'll never be forgotten. I'm in Lithuania uh, right now and I'm going to show you how you can make some natural laundry detergent from horse chestnuts. So let's begin. So there are a few ways. What you want to do, you want to break up the nut until it becomes kind of parts and bits like this. So um, you can do it different ways. So you can either use some kind of like a nut cracker and just crunch it that way. It is quite, quite hard. So just you can crack it that way and break it up into smaller pieces. Or you could take some kind of old pillowcase or some kind of sock or something, and you could add a few of the um, of the nuts, horse chestnuts, into there and whack it somewhere outside on a step with a hammer or something like that and do it this way. You'll damage the um, the actual fabric so you know just use something that you you know it's old and not used so as you can see my horse chestnuts are quite large chunks so what I want to do before I dehydrate them I'm gonna pour them in my food processor where I can kind of blend them to a more consistent kind of like smaller um, chunks so I cut them up a little bit. We'll see how it goes now. I'll do a little bit at the time. So I blended it for 30 seconds and it seems it's much finer now. Um, yeah, it's definitely a finer consistency. I might give it another 30 seconds. I kind of want it um, not quite a powder, but you know, quite fine. So it's been a minute 
and that's looking much better. I'm gonna now transfer it to my dehydrator sheet. So now this is ready to go into my dehydrator or if you don't have one, you could do it in the oven on the lowest temperature, about 50 degrees um, for about, we'll see how long we need, maybe six to eight hours. In my dehydrator, I'll be doing it around 45 degrees. So I've got my um, Conkers, minced up Conkers dried out. Um, I left it overnight for about 12 hours in my dehydrator um, on 45 degrees um, Celsius. Yeah, and you could also do it um, in the oven, like I said. Um, so I'm gonna just pour it in a container. So could you, you could store it in a in a glass jar or airtight kind of plastic container because these are now fully dry. Um, and to keep it even drier, you could put like a silicon uh, pouch in there or um, a little bag of rice as well works. So so yeah, so these will store for quite a while. And very important, you want to wash these dehydrator sheet. Um, pieces and um, this is like a silicone kind of uh, things or if you use you know um baking sheets then obviously you're going to be throwing them away whereas this one uh, make sure you wash it because obviously um conquerors are poisonous so you don't want to put some food on top of this afterwards so yeah definitely wash um wash the sheets um and you know if if you can just wipe uh, wipe the sides of your dehydrator uh, trays as well just to make sure if any conquer juices have touched the edges that um, you know you clean that as well so I've got all of my pieces in this large container it just fit and I've got a bit of extra that I'm gonna give to my sister because she helped me to pick them up and um, cut them up too so, um, and that's a, a really neat idea to put in nice glass jars, put maybe a ribbon on it and give it um, for Christmas or birthdays um, to people that value natural chemical free detergents, people that love their kind of clothes ultra smelling with, um, you know, different kind of smells from chemical detergents probably will not appreciate that but people who like you know more eco-friendly stuff definitely will um enjoy getting this as a present um so yeah so now um there's um a few ways of doing this and i want to try um three methods so one method is to put some um some of this powder in a jug or jar um, pour some boiling water and leave it steeping for at least some people say half an hour um, some people say at least two hours some people say overnight I'm gonna leave it overnight because I want you know the most potent solution so apparently for uh, one load you need to use two to four tablespoons of horse chestnuts so I'm gonna use probably four um, I just want to ha have a good amount, so I'm going to use four tablespoons, so about a quarter of a cup. And here I've got one cup of just boiled water. I saw some people say uh, lukewarm water, some people say hot water, and um, some people say boiling water, but I just wanted obviously to make sure it's as potent as it could be. So I'm just using boiling water and I'm going to leave this to steep overnight and we're going to check the resulting liquid afterwards. So this um, concoction has been soaking for overnight and also the whole day as well. Um, so what I'm going to do, I've got a um, glass jug here with a little... Um, what you call it, a little spout and then also um, a sieve and then to kind of sieve it even finer I've got a bit of um, cheesecloth, um, muslin cloth um, and make sure you only use this 
Um, you could do it through nut milk bag, but maybe make sure you only use it for um, for this purpose. Don't use it for food anymore if you're going to use it. Uh, because like I said, this is um, toxic to eat, so you don't want to mix the two. So I'm going to just strain. I'm going to strain and put all the pulp in. I'm going to, you know, squeeze all that. Hopefully soapy liquid, we'll see. Um, I'm gonna just do a little squeeze with my with my cloth as well. And there's water coming out as you can see. Wanna squeeze all of the soapy goodness out of it. And you can see it's a little bit foamy when you kind of press it here, you can see a little bit. And what I'm going to do, I'm not going to throw these away. I'm going to keep these for another method, putting them in a sock or like um, a fabric bag to put in my um, in my washing machine uh, for another lot. But obviously for my experiment, I'm not going to use this. I'm going to keep this in the fridge for a couple of days until I do another load. But for my second part of experiment, I'm going to use this liquid as you can see there's a little bit here probably about half a cup um, so just give it a little thing oh and look at that how soapy that is that's beautiful look at that so yeah so this is definitely nice and soapy so I'm gonna use to wash a load of um, clothes washing with this and also comparatively I'm gonna make the other method that I, I talked to you about. So for my second method I'm gonna use an old sock. So this is my uh, husband's beloved walking socks and it's a little bit past mend at this point because it's quite a large hole and there's not much material around so this will be used as my uh, washing sock if you like. So I'm gonna just cut one end and also you could use um, this end as well. You would need um, two, um, two um, rubber bands for both sides if you, if you did that one or you could kind of sew one end up and then keep that as an opening. Uh, but I'm gonna use this end because it's already closed. So I'm just gonna cut this bit off. And this is gonna be my washing sock. So I'm gonna add the exact same amount, four tablespoons of dried, it's between two and four, depending how big your load is. So um, I'm gonna go exactly what I did for this one. I'm gonna do four, so three and four. So four tablespoons of dried conkers or chest, uh, horse chestnuts. And I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna secure it with the rubber band. In fact, you could probably put two if you're afraid that this might snap um, or put a thicker one. And I left a little bit more room for, for the um, for the conkers to kind of like, uh, you know, walk in, in the sock. So I didn't do it like quite small. So just so that it, it gets the room to, um, to kind of foam up if you like. So yeah, so I'm gonna do two ways. So um, one load I'm gonna do with this washing liquid and the other load I'm just gonna put maybe on, um, well, I'll do both at 40 degrees and see what happens and, and see what's, what's kind of the difference. Is it gonna be the same, similar? And if it's the same, then it's much easier to do this method because you don't need any pre-soaking and any um, any straining or any of that step. So yeah, so it would be interesting to know because this method um, my sister recommended because she said she's seen it somewhere, somebody doing that with conkers. However, um, I got that idea, the same idea from these soap nets. So these are just like a shells of soap nets, officially called soap nets. And these is the same method. So you put them in a little um, kind of pouch. Um, it's like a little um, cotton uh, pouch. You put them in and put it straight into the washing machine because the hot water or warm water activates them. 
So yeah, so that's the exact same idea. These are, um, you know, called uh, soap nuts or washing nuts. Um, and that's their shells. So we're gonna try the same idea with our horse chestnut homemade um, washing up powder, washing powder. <laughs> so yeah, so um, I'm gonna do the two loads and I'm gonna discuss what the results are from both. And also to help, another tip to help with the stain removal, I'm gonna add a tablespoon of bicarb soda. You can put, I think somewhere I've seen two teaspoons. So yeah, te two teaspoons to three teaspoons of uh, bicarb soda I'm gonna put straight in the drum on the clothes because apparently that washes them better and that helps lift the stains because on their own, then you know this horse chestnut this so even though it's soapy it's not that great at removing and lifting stains so bicarb soda should help that so yeah so i'm gonna put a tablespoon each of bicarb soda in each of the washes and um, and then we gonna compare the two results so i've got my clothes here um and i've got about half a load it's not going to be a massive load and i've got some stains um on on this blouse i had some kind of a, like a ketchupy a bit of a stain here so it'll be interesting to see if um if that kind of lifts with the help of bicarb soda so this is my light washing so i'm gonna add one tablespoon of bicarb soda straight into the drum onto the clothes here um so i'm gonna close that do on my daily wash temperature I'll do 40 for both and I'm gonna add this liquid into my normal washing drawer um, and I'm gonna do original as in like not scented with anything just how it comes because I want to you know check it out how it's it gonna you know how is it gonna smell apparently people say it smells of freshness and of sunshine and of nothing in particular but if you wanted to, you could um, also put um, some essential oils into this as well. Um, you know, once you kind of start playing around with it. So there you go. So that goes in and this is going to go now clean for hour and three minutes. So my first batch of clothing is washed. And let's have a, have a feel actually it doesn't smell of anything yeah very very neutral yeah definitely doesn't smell of anything at all no good no bad just kind of yeah kind of fresh and now i'm looking for that stain it was on the front here and that seems to have definitely lifted so that's good news but yeah yeah that looks quite good um that didn't wash the ends very well so perhaps it needs a little bit more bicarb soda um but all in all quite good guys yeah it seems like quite well washed and if you like some smell then add some um you know your favorite essential oil a few drops so this is my second load and i've got darker clothes this time um, and this is a little bit more difficult um kind of load because this is mainly mark's clothes um and they're kind of mostly work clothes they're a little bit more sweaty and a little bit more smelly so we'll see how this second method works so this is that um Mark's old sock that I've filled with um, dried conkers or horse chestnut powder um, and we're gonna pop it into the load and we're gonna wash it at 40 degrees just like before a daily wash um, as normal. Oh I forgot to the bicarb soda. We're also adding a tablespoon of bicarb soda for this load as well just to help with the stains and the smells and we're not going to add any essential oils here as well so let's go so my load number two has finished so this is the one 
that had the um, powder in the sock. So let me, hmm, that is surprisingly non-stinky. I mean, Mark's, um, Mark's, uh, what you call it, um, the warm layer still has some kind of odor, but it, it's all other things. Oh, they're all fine. Yeah, all of the washing actually smells of nothing. Just very, very neutral. And that's what we used in here. So my experiment and first time making a washing powder from Conkus is a success and I think from the two methods, one with the liquid and one with using an old sock or just uh, some kind of linen bag you can put uh, the powder, I think I don't see much of a difference to be fair so I think I will be using this method going forward because it's much easier, you just chuck it in the sock into the washing machine and off you go, no pre-soaking, no filtering, any nothing like that. So yeah, so um, let me know which method um, you know you tried, what you thought of it, if you made your own uh, washing up powder. Um, and again, I wanted to dedicate this video to my dear beloved grandma who sadly passed away recently. And you know, um, I just believe that it's the end of her kind of body if you like but I believe her soul um you know is in a different dimension and I've gained another angel to watch over me so I love you grandma you wear um like my second mom and I will miss you immensely but I'll always remember amazing moments together I love you so, so yeah, thank you for watching the video. I hope you liked it. Give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. Um, comment, let me know what you thought of the um, washing powder, if you tried it. If you're new to the channel, welcome and subscribe for more videos. I upload um, two videos a week normally. <laughs> I try to anyway. Um, and as always, remember, food is fuel. So be mindful of what you put in the body and also what you put on your body because it's so important not to have chemicals on our bodies as well because skin is our biggest um, organ. So until next time, see you.